uh, it's uh, 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 Wednesday, the 21st of October. I am Boston Namafaye, and this is your Frontier Opening Bell. L let's go through the uh, today's uh, show. Ali Kansachu in Nairobi. Thank you so much, Ali, for coming. We appreciate your time on Rich uh, Frontiers Management. And uh, Luke Ofojebe, who is uh, head of uh, equity research at uh, Vetiva Capital Management. Good morning, gentlemen. Thank you very much. Look at the markets uh, for a second trading uh, day for Frontier Africa, Nigeria markets after a flat opening on Monday went up 0.03% on Tuesday. The Ivorian market and the Egyptian stock market uh, finished in the red. And looking at the East African markets uh, very quickly uh, in terms of the top uh, uh, stories right now, the uh, troubled supermarket Tusky says it's going to shut down another uh, store in Kenya, uh, and the country's revenue shortfall is getting bigger. Insurance penetration down 2.37%, premium nearly 100 billion last year, according to latest data. And Ethiopia's Prime Minister Abe is looking at 6.1%. So 6.1% was the economic growth in the last year's budget, which was 2020-2021. And ahead of the October 28th annual uh, sorry, uh, presidential and general elections, the AFDB has given Tanzania $50.7 million for COVID-19 crisis response for the budget support. Uh, Ali, give us your take on the East African space. So let me first start with this uh, headline, Kenya needs a trillion shillings to sustain revenue shortfall. The cabinet secretary has increased the budget by about just over a billion dollars. Um, uh, uh, and is saying that he's going to increase the domestic borrowing requirements by that same amount, which makes the domestic borrowing uh, total um, six, uh, 600 billion shillings, which is close to $6 billion. I think um, uh, he's taking some comfort from the central bank, which has managed to wrestle local interest rates much lower um, and therefore is seen that as an opportunity to tap the local bond market. But, you know, we're now pushing on a string here, I'm afraid, and our borrowing is really growing at a tremendous clip and is a, going to be a concern at some point down the road, I'm sure. Tuskegee's shutting down another store in Kenya. Really, you know, they've been promising that they've got an international investor out of Mauritius, I think, um, but it looks to me, you know, you hit a death spiral at some point, the money doesn't come in. And I think essentially uh, Tuskies is in a death spiral. It's got some fierce competition from the likes of Carrefour, um, who came out of the UAE. Uh, you've got Naivas, which has been funded by a French private equity entity. Um, you've got very strong supermarkets, and it's unfortunate. I think Tuskies is headed the way of, of Nakumat. Kenya insurance penetration down to 2.37%, premiums rise. Look, the insurance sector is an enormous opportunity. We recently had that announcement about Allianz uh, partnering with Jubilee. Um, uh, penetration levels are so low. There's only one way that's higher. But I think, you know, actuarial skills have not been strong. There are accumulated losses in the sector. And uh, there is an opportunity for people with strong balance sheets now to really come clean up. And I think that's what we're going to see. Ethiopia, 6.1% economic growth last budget year. That looks a little bit rich to me. Um, I'm surprised by that number. Um, Ethiopia, of course, has been... Um, uh, a standout, an outlier on the continent, but it's got several challenges right now um, uh, as to whether the centre can hold. Uh, Prime Minister Abiy is dealing with a very fractious Tigray, for example, and there's been plenty of unrest. I think 6.1% is probably going to be the peak over the next two to three years. AFDB, $50.7 million COVID-19 crisis response budget aid for Tanzania. A little bit funny because Tanzania denies they've got any COVID at all. But uh, this is probably an economic um, uh, uh, response because, of course, COVID has been a bigger economic emergency than a medical emergency on the continent. Mm. Thank you so much, uh, Ali, for, for covering the grounds there for us within the East Africa and the uh, Horn of Africa's corridor with Ethiopia's uh, situation 
and especially the insurance market in, in East Africa with Alliance coming through and picking up a, a whole number of uh, uh, insurance uh, companies within uh, the Jubilee Group. You, you pointed out that is one big news uh, uh, coming through within the East African market. Let's check in with West Africa. And Nigeria is the biggest news that everyone is looking at. There are political issues around the Ivorian uh, economy as well with the election, presidential election uh, uh, going uh, uh, about to happen and the uh, issues around the, uh, uh, the current president, incumbent, Alassane Ouattara, uh, also seeking a, a re-election. Uh, but Nigeria's businesses were shot overnight. That story came to a very deadly and sad uh, point late yesterday evening with security forces opening fire just ahead of the 9 p.m. implementation coffee of sort, the protesters who had started very peaceful and constitutional rights of uh, end police brutality being uh, uh, mowed down on the streets of Lagos. The central bank issued a new framework for financing of national uh, mass metering program for those who want to get involved in the electricity, electricity transition market. This is uh, something they need to look at and, and move on with that. Um, Luke, uh, could you come in here on the Nigerian side? We, we know what the top story really is. Yeah, I mean, so looking at the current state of things in the country, uh, we do believe that this will definitely have um, economic implications. Um, one is that we are going to see um, a sharp drop in um, retail sales and retail services, um, mainly due to the coffee in place. We do not know how long this will last. I mean, the, um, the Lagos State government mentioned that here in Lagos, which is the um, commercial capital of Nigeria, um, that the coffee is only going to last for 24 hours. But with the state of things right now, it looks more like it's going to extend beyond 24 hours because we are see we can see here cases of violence in some key parts of Lagos. Even to this very moment, I mean, it's still trending online that there are still cases of violence in, in different parts of the country. So. We think this will definitely impact um, economic activities in the meantime. Um, while um, the impacts might be more of the duration, and at the moment we can't really say what's, how long it's going to last. So if it's something that's going to last um, for more than one week, two weeks, um, then uh, it's really going to have um, material implications on the operations of companies, especially um, for companies in the wheel sector, um, both uh, services and 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 goods um, and those involving um, sales of goods. And then um, for the equity markets, really, um, last week, two weeks ago, we saw um, significant rally in companies' share prices. This was mainly driven by the diversion of liquidity from the fixed income markets to the equity markets um, due to the um, MPC decision to further cut rates in the fixed income market. So we saw that um, diversion of liquidity that supported the market um, over the past two weeks. But right now, investors are beginning to reassess their positions in the equity market. We are already in earnings season. The expectation is that from next week, the number of companies will start releasing their um, nine months results. So the expectation is that. Um, why we believe that the past is already behind us in terms of the impacts of COVID-19. Mm -hmm. A number of these companies, um, we do expect some of them to still um, report underwhelming um, results, especially for the consumer goods space. So as a result of this, we might see a bit of um, sustained bearish trading in the equity market, and we might see um, cherry picking in the banking space, given that um, in the banking sector, we've seen resilient um, performance so far. So we might see investors kind of um, focusing more on the banking um, stocks. But overall, we just need to mention that um, the current state of things in the um, in Nigeria might um, actually weigh on the equity market. Uh, we might see investors um, becoming nervous and they might just want to reduce their positions in the equity market and rather want to stick to cash um, in the meantime. Yes, they, they may want to stick to cash a little bit. Um, uh, but, but again, uh, wh whatever happens, uh, tr trading will go. Today is the debt management officer. Uh, 30 billion era bond offering. We, we know the financial market services industry uh, will, will go on with that particular situation. But the long-term effect 
is now looking. What's your take on this, uh, Ali? How do you think foreign portfolio and direct investors will, would likely consider the Nigeria's ongoing situation, the, the killings of um, peaceful protesters in downtown Lagos overnight, opening so, sporadic firing on, 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 on them? So I've got to be frank. I mean, you know, looking at it from uh, the eastern coast, um, it's it's the volume of of uh, comment and commentary, and the level of unhappiness is speaking to what I would say is a, could be a massive uh, inflection point in terms of uh, Nigeria's political dynamics. I mean, um, I, I I find I'm hard pressed to find anybody who's supporting. Uh, the government uh, in this current situation. And I, I'm hard pressed um, to understand the government's thinking. I mean, you know, my, my, my response would be, how many people are you going to allow to be shot dead before it runs out of control? And, and at the end of the day, there is a threshold beyond which a government cannot go. And we will only discover where that threshold is in, 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 its, in its unfolding. So I think risk-wise, a lot of people are looking at Nigeria and wondering exactly what happens next. There, you know, the, the political risk uh, um, uh, is blinking amber. And um, you know, we've seen this phenomena uh, over the last decade. You will remember when Blaise Kambori was overthrown um, in 2014. And I think um, uh, we're looking at a situation which could spread. In, it's not only going to be unique to Nigeria, but right now, um, uh, what we're watching unfold is simply untenable, is how I look at it. And um, I really hope that President Buhari uh, listens to more sensible advice and starts off by, first of all, speaking to the country and apologizing for these lives that have been lost. Thank you so much, uh, uh, Ali, uh, for, for weighing in on this uh, Nigeria's uh, latest uh, uh, very sad, unfortunate uh, development. Let's talk about the Southern African market very quickly uh, as we <coughs> go to uh, the show. The Steinhoff got slapped by fines by the GSE for misleading financials. Of course, you mislead the market, the authorities will come down very hard on you. That's the rule of the of the marketplace, pick and pay, buying online shopping, startup bottles. Standard Bank says his clients are beginning to feel uh, the impact of COVID-19 and the downturn in the economy. So layoffs are beginning to hit the clients and the clients, uh, the Standard Bank says they are beginning to see that on the books or in the business of their clientele. Multi-choice now Netflix will help South African uh, uh, the broadcast uh, corporation, SABC, to collect uh, license fees and uh, the CEO of Botswana Stock Exchange, Tafelu Chiole, re elected. Uh, so, this is uh, the Southern African story. I'm sure, uh, Ali, you want to talk about the Steinhoff story. This company's troubles never seem to go away. No, and uh, you know, it was a complete saga, and really, 13.5 million rand is, 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 is a Peanut, not even peanuts, um, for for what what you know the, the amount of misleading of investors that occurred there, um, and I think it's important for the Johannesburg Stock Exchange and the authorities there um, to deal with this with a bit more uh, purpose. Um, you know, it's really a shocking story, and um, uh, it, you know, it, I, I think they, it, the punishments should be much more severe. Um, it's you know, investors lost a huge amounts of money, um, and you know it, it, it doesn't do uh, any. Uh, it doesn't help South Africa's very strong reputation, um, and I think it's important that the authorities are more aggressive. But this is a step in the right direction. Pick and pay buying online shopping startup bottles amid low sales. Look. The acceleration in the case of digitization has been uh, practically parabolic since this pandemic hit. So that's a, that's a sensible, uh, intelligent uh, uh, extension uh, for pick and pay who've been suffering uh, uh, in the last set of results. Um, look, if you don't have a digital strategy and a digitization strategy, online e-commerce, you're not even in the game. So that's a positive step. It'll be interesting to see how investors react to it. 
Standard Bank saying clients under stress as layoffs rise. Look, you know, this is our first recession in 25 years in Africa. Of course, South Africa has been in recession since uh, for a number of years. So you would expect the clients to be feeling the pain. I think uh, some investors were too optimistic about a V-shaped recovery. I don't think that's going to happen. Um, I think it's more of an L. Um, and I think Standard Bank are confirming that. Finally, multi-choice Netflix to help SABC collect license fees. I was thinking about Netflix, actually, and uh, they put, put out results yesterday, which disappointed the market. But you know what Netflix has really done? It's disrupted Hollywood. I'm finding a lot of great African content on Netflix now, which is telling our story from our perspective. And for that, I've got to commend them, really, because they've encouraged that. Uh, mm. And it's funny that Reed Hastings, of all people, uh, uh, did that. But I think he's done it. He's broken that uh, monolith that was Hollywood, which interpreted the world through Hollywood's eyes. He's allowed talent to come and percolate to the surface, and I'm all for it. Thank you so much, uh, uh, Ali. The, uh, I'm asking uh, Luke to help us stick with the Nigerian story. Uh, are there, what are the concerns over the last one week? The end south end police brutality uh, protest has been on for about a week or uh, going into the second week. Uh, so what are the concerns of both local and foreign investors that you folks have heard on the ground here on the market street? I mean, um, so with regard to the markets, I mean, um, you could tell that um, political risk in Nigeria is now heightened. Um, so at the moment, a number of investors are really um, are more concerned about um, what's going to happen next. So the situation is very uncertain and it's very um, fragile. It's, and from what we are seeing right now, it's becoming um, volatile. So we are seeing violent um, um, cases erupt in different parts of the country. So investors have now started uh, you know, assessing the risk situation. Um, for the foreign investors, it's a bit pathetic for them because before now, um, I mean, they were trying to exit the country, but due to limited effects of life, um, they could not. So a number of them actually stranded in Nigeria. Um, or rather what they did was to reduce their exposure in Nigerian equities and play more in the fixed income space, um, given the um, uh, higher levels of liquidity in that space. Should uh, FX supply improve, they can easily exit. But given the situation right now, their political risk is also heightened. Um, I mean, it's, 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 a, it's a terrible situation for the foreign investors because whatever the case, and it means they are still stranded in Nigeria and they can't really leave. And what this also means is that um, due to this um, um, further pressure on exchange rates, we might see um, more pressure on the Naira. We might see um, it depreciating significantly, especially in the parallel markets where it is mainly driven by um, speculative sentiment. So we might see it's even um, worsening to about 500 Naira levels um, if this situation persists um, for a couple of weeks. And then um, for the equity markets, I mean, a number of investors right now um, who might, if this lingers on, they might want to reduce their exposure um, in the equity markets. Like I said earlier, mm. there might be a strong preference for cash in the interim just to ensure that your asset is preserved. Even if there won't be no returns on your assets, um, first and foremost, your assets should be preserved. So we might see that strong preference for cash. And if at all they want to play in the equity space, we might see limited exposure. Um, right now, the banking sector is considered on the ex on the Nigerian stock exchange. The banking sector is considered to be the most liquid sector. So we might see investors, you know, kind of um, tilting towards that sector. We might see them reducing their exposure in oil and gas, um, consumer goods, industrial goods, and play more in the banking space. However, however, we still think that this should also be limited anyway. Um, so overall, um, I think the the highlight of this is that um, political risk is now heightened and this risk surpasses all other forms of risk. It surpasses economic risk. It surpasses the risk that the Nigerian economy is going to contract further in the third quarter. Um, it surpasses um, foreign exchange risk. Um, this is a risk that um, once it goes south, 
um, investors just want to pull out of the country. So we might see that downturn in trading sentiments. We might see stocks trending downwards going forward. And let's not forget that the economy is still battling with the impacts of COVID-19. Um, even before this NSAS um, protest, the expectation um, was that the Nigerian economy is going to contract again in the third quarter. So we should expect the Nigerian economy to um, slide into a recession, a technical recession when um, GDP data for the third quarter is released. And with this NSAS protest, I think this is just further going to worsen the situation because we're actually expecting the economy to show signs of recovery in the um, fourth quarter due to um, softer social distancing measures that the governments have put in place. But with this right now, even when the curfew is lifted, we are still going to see limited movements of people and goods because um, it's just going to be um, um, people trying to ensure that they are safe. Um, so it's not just what the government says right now, whether there is a coffee or not. Um, from what we are seeing online, um, it's clear that um, um, staying um, outdoors is not safe. Um, so we think that will um, bite economic activities in the interim. Um, the, the hope right now is that the government should quickly come out and address this. And when I say the government, the president, of course, needs to come out and address Nigerians, um, address Nigerians on what he plans to do, on how he, in, he intends to stop this um, violence we are seeing from um, government officials. Until that is, um, that is done, we do not think this political risk is going to um, reduce any moment from now. Rather, it's just going to worsen because we already have the youth, um, the Nigerian youth, angry, they're agitated. And right now, it's more like they're just fighting back for their lives. So if we continue to see these clashes between um, government officials and the Nigerian youth, um, we might just continue to see that negative downturn, um, both in the equity and fixed income markets. Thank you. Well, well, well said, Luke Ofojebe. Thank you very much for that comprehensive uh, outlook on, on markets, uh, economy, and, and some sector uh, 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 positions uh, in this. Let's uh, take a final uh, shot uh, on the show this morning for about a minute on North Africa. Ali will give us about a minute on Orascom uh, shareholders. So, okay, that the company should, uh, should split. Well, this is one big story. Let's take that, Ali, uh, and wrap up the show. Yeah, so, I mean, Orascom uh, uh, looking to split, I mean, you know, it, it, is, it, it, it has been a conglomerate for a long time, and I think they're looking to extract better value off from each piece of, of, of that conglomerate. So I think it's a big step forward. Egypt overall has been doing rather well. They put out GDP for the, the full fiscal year was above 3%, which is a real positive outcome as well, and a strong tailwind for Egyptian businesses. The only fly in the ointment in North Africa really has been the spike in COVID-19 cases. It's a pronounced trend in the North compared to the East, the West and the South. And I think that's what some people are getting a little bit nervous about. But overall, um, Egypt or Eskom have been performing very, very strongly in the current environment. Okay, Th thank you so much, Ali, for rounding off the show for us this morning. Uh, Thank you. Thank you from uh, Rich Frontiers Management, the CEO and founder. Thank you so much for your time. Luke Ofojebe, thank you so much also from Betiva Capital, the head of equity market research. Thank you. We appreciate both of you. Do have a very nice day and stay safe, everyone. Thank you and bye for now.